Welcome to Military's Disneyland. I'd like to invite you to one of the world's largest military exhibitions that's located near Moscow, Russia. If you like military, it probably would be worth visiting Moscow, Russia just to visit this particular place. It's called Park Patriot. I don't even know how to describe it. Well, let's just, let's take a look instead. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Konstantin and welcome to Letters to King. We're living in today's Russia Explained by the insider you can trust. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much. You're awesome and you rock. Please keep on coming back for more. Moscow has so much to offer. And today it's offering us a huge amusement park, military amusement park for adults and for kids. And of course it's built and operated and sponsored by the Russian army. We are at the outdoor exhibition, the, the outdoor park right now. We're gonna cover the ground and move to the indoor park right next door. This is probably world's largest outdoor military vehicle park. Missile launchers way over there. Modern jet fighters and helicopters. These are the support vehicles. Smaller helicopters, older jet fighters. Troop carriers and heavy tanks over there. There's a bunch of more troop carriers, engineer vehicles, and even there's a submarine right there. This is the outdoor section. Then there's more on the other side, the outdoor vehicles on display. And you see these depots over here, everywhere. These are huge indoor installations of um, military vehicles. See over there, it's all parking. It's like Disney World parking. And parking right here too. This is how the entrance looks like. Very few people. This is the size of Disney World. I'm telling you, this place is grand. Really hard to explain what this place is. I'd rather show you. This is a transporter helicopter. And this thing is so huge. This is probably the biggest in the world. Wow, this thing is humongous. One wheel is bigger than Michael. These are ground to air missile launchers. You know, this is real deal. All these rockets have like instructions written on them, how to use them and things like that. I think they were just uh, commissioned and then placed here on display, but they were like, you know, real, real, real specimen. I want to check out that big boy right there. That's a transporting machine. That's a radar machine and this is a transporting machine. So basically it transports intercontinental ballistic missiles. They are at different angle. This is a very old Soviet plane called MiG-21. It was being manufactured in the 50s and the 60s. My father used to be a mechanic on one of these planes. MiG-21, that's his plane. This pavilion is called the World of Military Engines. There's a huge engine exhibition inside. There's another old Soviet plane, MiG-23. One thing I don't understand, and unfortunately this is very typical for Russia, is this brand new park. It was commissioned a little over two years ago. And look at this. To me, it looks like someone, perhaps, who was building this 
Concrete Foundation stole some money. Ah, this is ridiculous. Seeing the budget of Russian Federation, meaning the taxpayers, including me, paid billions and billions of rubles for this park to be constructed. Oi, one, two, three, four, five, and this is only two years old, six, seven, eight, and uh, there is no heavy use whatsoever. People barely walk here. Russia can build world's best planes, warplanes, fighters, rockets, but it can't build decent roads that last for longer than two years. So these planes are also old, but they are newer and more advanced than the ones we just saw. So this is a legend, MiG-31. I think there are hundreds, perhaps thousands of planes these kind of this kind are in operation all over the world. Excellent warplane, uh, was manufactured, it was designed in the 70s, manufactured in the 80s, 90s and teen. This is an older plane, Su-24. This is a bomber. Look at the charges it carries. This is another legend, Su-27. This thing, <laughs> I tell you, this thing looks sexy, okay? It's designed beautifully. It's a pleasure for an eye. The designer of this plane should work for Apple. Another MiG-29, a different modification. Let's take a little closer look. It's a Sopla. Whoa. The engine? There's a turbine. It looks like this uh, a machine out of Star Wars <laughs> from this angle. <laughs> it's pretty insane. This is one of Russia's first helicopters. Me too. Am I too? This is another older helicopter. Holy cow, these things are big. K-27. This is a real deal. This is the armor section. The support engineer vehicles and the assault heavy tanks over there. The number of vehicles here on display is amazing. These are the monuments of Russian ace tankers from World War II. One woman, wow. This is light assault armor. And heavy assault armor over there. One of the greatest things about this amusement park is that you can touch pretty much any exhibition. Moreover, 
you can climb up and some of them you can get inside. Michael's having so much fun. Давай, залезай на танк. Another light assault armor. This is another one. I'm so proud of my son. He climbs up anything he can get his hands on. Fearless and very curious. These are engineer support and special purpose vehicles. I don't really know what they are. They are for the Arctic, for the deserts, you know, uh, raiders and things. These are the heavy tanks. Russia's finest. T-64, T-80. Russians love tanks. This is another T-80, but modernized with dynamic, modern armor. Kids love them. Let me tell you, there are plenty of vehicles and tanks and planes here, but nothing modern. There is no modern tanks like Armata or no, you know, modern planes like Su-35. Just old, very well-known models that I guess they can be harmlessly put on display for anyone and filmed. <laughs> Just finished our second lunch the remainings of our buckwheat and turkey have a couple apples left and we've chosen the best spot to have our lunch outback of t80 heavy assault tank my small question of the day is have you ever had a lunch on the outback on the armor of a tank. More armor. Goodness gracious. This is the field kitchen. Buckwheat and oatmeal. This is Michael's favorite vehicle, support vehicle. This is a path maker, the road maker. Давай. Давай. Дальше лезь. Держись только за эту штукенцию. На меня посмотри только аккуратно. That's... That's high. 
Мишка, аккуратнее давай. Be careful. This is a military grade excavator. All armored. <laughs> Cannons and cannon systems over there. We're too beat to walk that way. No, not today. More armor, a submarine, and all kinds of torpedoes, and uh, a little further, the space rocket. These are marine engines for ships. Torpedoes. And God knows what this is. Heavy. Looks like a space rocket. And this thing, uh, God knows what this is. Some kind of a rocket plane. We've seen so many specimens of military machinery that I don't even know what this is anymore. The Chinese guys are surveying. We are entering the indoor museum of heavy tanks and vehicles. Let's go check it out. This indoor exhibition is dedicated to World War II vehicles and armor, both Russian and German. This is a legendary Soviet tank T-34. Soviet Union basically won World War II with this tank, with great help of this tank. Wow, this is Japanese armor. I've never seen anything like this. Japanese World War II tanks. Holy cow. Chiha. Shinho to Chiha. Another one. They're tiny. Hago. Kenu. What in the world is Whoa, 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 what is this? Is this a Lego tank? Seriously, this thing is out of Lego. Okay, this is tiny, a micro tank. You know what? I'm not impressed with the Japanese armor at all. They had really, really weak tanks compared with the Russian and German ones. My friends, this is some serious armor. This is German Panzers. King Tiger. Oh, this, is, this thing is huge. I've never seen a Tiger up close. Well, actually, I haven't seen one German tank up close. Unbelievable, these are legends. Mass Horn. It's a very famous destroyer, tank destroyer, Mass Horn. This is another tank destroyer. This is uh, tiny, but so, it looks so fearsome. Hetza. Um. Let me tell you, Germans had some great tanks. Wow, check this out. This is American tank, Sherman. It's a pretty famous tank too. Not, not as, as good as the German or Russian ones, but still fearsome.
Yes, this is real weapon used in World War II. You see how this exhibition organized? On the left side is German armor and on the right side is Russian armor. So all these tanks face each other. They're ready to go and fight each other. This is another T-34, the legend. Let's uh, look what's inside. Can't really see much. By the way, these tanks, the German ones, they were designed and manufactured by Porsche and Mercedes. So basically, we're looking at a bunch of Porsches and a bunch of Mercedeses. And BMW was designed in planes. This is a Russian heavy tank, Joseph Stalin. It was a rival of uh, Tiger. Isu-152. This is another legend. This is a tank killer and look at the caliber of its cannon. It's 152 millimeters. It's huge. This is another Tiger. Oh, this thing is Panzer Tiger. More Russian and German heavy armor. This is a German heavy tank Tiger facing Russian heavy tank KV-75. It's pretty impressive what's left of a Russian plane. This is where we're gonna have a picnic. I brought some buckwheat and boiled turkey. It's gonna be good. We've done that before here. Что, Миш, будем кушать? Давай. Держи воду. Держи ложку, положи туда его. Да, это на десерт. This is for dessert. This is the buckwheat. For a picnic, we're having a buckwheat and some turkey. Ну как? Вкусно. Ну так это же это же военный завтрак, вернее, ланч. Is good? Знаешь, я маму попросил мне купить. Военные штаны, военные сапоги, военные перчатки и военные шлемы. Я уже знаю, сынок. У меня уже это в бюджете. The reason we're having lunch here is... This place is really a fantasy land for a military lover. But it's extremely poorly organized. Just like pretty much a lot of things in Russia. Last time we came here... We wanted to have lunch at a local cafe and we literally had to stand for half an hour to get our food. The place was packed. People, the, the, the line was moving so slow. People were so upset. They were screaming at the cashiers. And I decided, heck, next time we come here, we bring our own lunch. 
and you know eat it in a very nice military setting like this right near right now this buckwheat is pretty good by the way i feel like a soldier on the go the visitors here are mostly families with kids boys and parents are walking around me right now they're looking at me and michael having lunch here and they're so envious they just look at us like oh we, we wish we could pack the lunches too oh by the way if you find this video interesting please like it and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more updates from mother russia like this one and if you want the recipe of this dish buckwheat and turkey you let me know it's very complicated but comes out really tasty i'm just joking that's uh <laughs> that's the probably the easiest thing to cook We are done with our lunch, refueled, keep on going. More armor, both Russian and German. Somehow this German tank is so popular among Russians, like everyone takes pictures of here. Even Michael would like to go and check it out. really beats me. I would think that a Soviet tank would be very popular, but a German one. You live, you learn. What would our grandparents say? Not a bad looking tank, by the way fascinates me it's so brutal so forceful it's a heavy tank destroyer kv 3001 i believe it's huge look how tiny michael looks in front of this tank uh the, the wheels huge cast iron wheels are bigger than michael The most interesting tank I've seen in this place is this one right here. I think this tank, well, it's an Italian tankette, and I think it was designed and made for munchkins. No, seriously, this is so tiny and small. There's no way I would fit here. Michael would fit perfectly. So this is the munchkin tank. This T-34 was recovered recently uh, was found on the bottom of the lake and recovered and it was not restored on purpose just to show what you know unrestored tank looks like it looks exactly the same way it looked in world war ii another exhibition of armor although lighter armor this is a real life model of a german bunker Although, it's not the German inside, it's the Soviet. This is another exhibition hall. Again, Russian and German armor, although light armor. This place reminds me of Smithsonian so bad. One more exhibition, more tanks. Ah, uh, this, is, this, this is just amazing, there are so many tanks. What dozens and dozens and dozens of tanks of all kinds. Japanese, Italian, German, Russian, American. Ah, this is an exhibition of modern Russian Marines. Attack helicopter with paratroopers. Michael wants to be a paratrooper. Давай, заходи. Нужно? Ты 
These things were used in Afghanistan. They kind of look small too, like a car. popular notice one thing how dangerous it is to climb up on this tank and uh, you know little kids do it themselves I don't think that anything like this would fly in the United States because of liability issues but in Russia there are no liability issues because if you climb up on a tank like this and it's dangerous you act at your own risk and if you let your child climb up unattended and if you know she falls down and breaks something that's not uh, the museum's fault that's your fault because you neglected your child okay no one's gonna sue the museum and i think it's absolutely wonderful there aren't even signs anywhere that you own you act at your own risk this is how little kids learn common sense right at early age. Michael plays around this tank by himself. He, you know, um, climbs down there by himself, climbs up. He fell down once and now he knows better to watch his step and to rely on his hands. Uh, and this is how he learns how to, in to interact with this dangerous world. He's bumped his head. But hey, this is a freaking tank, okay? No, ничего, ничего, давай. Get up. This is not a toy, you know? He bumped his head, but next time he'll think twice. He just climbed out of the tank by himself. And this is how all kids play here. I think these are recruiter offices. Мишка, посмотри. Держи фонарик. Что тут есть? Это не кино. Пос... А, бинокль, да. Посмотри мне. Миш, а ну посмотри, посвети вот здесь, что тут внутри. Миша полез куда-то туда, в отделение. На себя посвети, Мишка. Можно мне? Все, дружище, подожди, подожди, аккуратно. Давай. Опа. 
Миша, посмотри в бинокль. Это камера? Посмотри на меня, сынок. Да, конечно. Ого. In front of this tank, I myself feel like a kid. Um, I'd like to get inside. <laughs> so far, Michael is the only one who uh, visited insides of the tank. But this is pretty, pretty cool. I wish I had something like this when I was a kid. This is a nuclear bomb section. I hope they're not real. <laughs> A nuclear torpedo. And this is a, a part of a nuclear charge of a. Uh, this is a virtual game center. This is a skinless, armorless tank. This is so cool. You can see through what tank is made of. Сюда залезть можешь. Давай. Сюда engine. Looks very strange without all armor. Huge engine. That's a jet fighter. You can actually get inside. Su-25. This is an older plane. Well, obviously. Wow, this is so cool. This is a real warplane. Бери шлем. Бери, бери шлем. Одевать будешь? Нет, давай, садись лучше. Шлем будешь брать? This is so cool. Посмотри на меня. Ну как? 
Все. This is a Space Forces Pavilion. Let's check it out. Military Sputniks. This is a Russian equivalent of GPS satellites. In Russia we call it GLONASS. This particular place reminds me of a Smithsonian Museum in Washington DC. Um, I remember there was a one museum dedicated to electronics and mechanics and vehicles and then they had um, space spaceships here. Very similar to Smithsonian. So this is how the landing module of a spaceship looks like. I'll be honest with you, there's nothing interesting here. Wow, these are the earliest tanks that humans created. Heavy tank T-35. This thing is massive. <laughs> These are small tanks. This thing is like a house. This thing is big too. Погоди. Нет, сюда нельзя. This is a heavy tank, T-80. Dynamic armor. This thing is big. Next, that's right, the Army Cafe. We're gonna have our third lunch. Well, two previous ones were really light ones. Michael is growing and he's always hungry. So his favorite place anywhere we go is a cafe or a cantina or a restaurant. And this is the Army Cafe. And of course, before we go, we gotta shoot a little bit. Come on, Michael, shoot. Wow, I guess this is one of those field kitchens and it looks like it's operational. So this is the cafe. Virtually no people and yet still there is a lion. There's almost nothing left. А тарелочки есть другие? Только такие остались. Нет, больше ничего. Not too appetizing, but that's okay. It's the army after all. A bowl of soup. Russian army can't go without the bud is what we got at Army's Cafe. A soup, a drink, uh, macaroni with 
some kind of beef ragu and a little um, dessert for Michael with sour cherry. All cost us five bucks, which is about, you know, it looks just right for an army meal. It's actually pretty exciting to be around these things, but also pretty sad because they all participated in World War II and then how many deaths each tank has behind them. Ah, it's, it's really a mixed feeling, you know. One thing to appreciate the technical beauty and superiority of this incredible machine, but then when I recall that they're nothing but death machines designed to kill as many people as possible, it's pretty sad, you know. Yeah.